Today on Locked on Rockies, let's see lessons learned from the wild card series for the Colorado Rockies. Who do we have high expectations for and the power of the home run? More maybe the over belief in the home run of a certain podcast host. You are locked on Rockies, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Rock On Rockies fans, welcome into the Locked On Rockies podcast for today, the fourth day of October in the year 2024. I'm your host of the Locked On Rockies podcast, Paul Holden, bringing you all your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. You can be part of the show, firing off your Rockies hot takes. Let me know what's on your mind when it comes to the Colorado Rockies. And if you think that these uh, Rockies got some cool stuff going on, maybe you got some frustrations, let us know in the Locked on Rockies YouTube comment section. Be part of the show. Fire off your hot takes. We'll read a couple of comments from the uh, comment section today as we go through the show. And, of course, every time you like the videos, every time you subscribe to the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel, it's the easiest way to help support the show. And we really do appreciate it. We are on the road to 100 or not 100, 1,000 subscribers, and we are almost there. So if you can go over to the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel, click that subscribe button and make sure you don't miss out on all the video podcasts. Hey, but if you just like to listen to the audio, you just want to get it on your favorite streaming services, no worries at all. Any way you tune into the show, any way you support the show, we really do appreciate it. We're going to talk about lessons learned from the wild card series here. We're going to talk about the importance or the over exaggeration of the importance of home runs. And of course, some expectations for Rockies players next year. We're going to dive into all of that and more. But before we do that, got to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking. Yeah, the right state can make you a fan of any city, even your baseball rivals. Book today on Booking.com, the official accommodation partner of Major League Baseball. Get the Booking.com app today. Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, do we want to start postseason or do we want to start Rockies first? Well, I wanted to start. I, let's let's start here. So I was going to start this, and I was like, "Hey, I'm pretty positive that if you hit the most home runs in the playoffs, you're going to win." And I think that that still can be true. But I think it's interesting to look at when you look at from the results of the wild card series. The when it comes to home runs, the uh, team at the top, the Milwaukee Brewers, who hit five. The San Diego Padres are at thir- are, are coming second, advancing. They have three. Atlanta, two, gone. Baltimore, and then everyone else, uh, I think, is basically tied with one. Kansas City and Houston uh, have hit no home runs so far, of course. Houston eliminated. Baltimore eliminated. Braves eliminated. Brewers eliminated. And I think that's the most shocking thing. And I, <laughs> I, I didn't really know this until I talked to some Brewers fans. I didn't realize how cursed they were in the playoffs. I didn't know that they haven't won. They've only won like three playoff series or something like that uh, of late. The Rockies one being one of the most recent playoff series that they, that they have won. Cause you got to win that game. I I mean, you, 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 you secure the momentum. You do, you, you hit not only one, but two and back to back at home. Oh, man. I, 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 but like, you know, a lot of uh, you hear the saying, if you hit the more home runs, if you if, if you if you if you score first, you're going to win. But it's amazing to see how things can still fall apart for teams, even though because because that's not the only category that the Brewers led the wild card round in. The Brewers were the best team in the playoffs when it came to batting average. They had the most home runs. They had the most hits the most strikeouts, the most stolen bases. You would think that uh, that Milwaukee dominated that series, and yet they lost. And it just goes to show you that, like, there is so many things you can consider. There's so many options, and, and, and be like, oh, obviously, you hit more home runs, you hit the ball more, you're going to win. But not in October. It's not enough. That's it's it's wild 
that the Brewers statistically were one of the best, if not the best offense in the wild card round. I'm just I'm I'm just zoomed in on the wild card round here. And they're gone. They're eliminated. Looking at some other stat leaders there uh, um, of, of, of teams that are eliminated, you can't find them. Teams that uh, – teams that actually, no, that's not true. Houston, 23 strikeouts. They are no longer playing. And everyone else on in the tops of these categories are still in there. Hits – the Mets came in second at 20. The Tigers at 17. The Padres have 15. The Royals have 14 hits. Stolen bases. The Milwaukee stole five stolen bases in a three-game set. Let's, let's, let's take one of our first lessons here because originally I was going to focus on home runs as that is important. I mean, if you look at the runs scored by Milwaukee, the home the long ball was the one doing the damage for them to get them back in there. What a series that was, man. Oh my goodness. The 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 playoffs have started off very well, but I want to focus on I want to take I want to start taking some lessons here. I want to start I start peeling things out. Five stolen bases in this. That's that's base running aggression, baby. That's what we want to see from the Rockies. That's what we need to see. So the Rockies got to be more aggressive on the bags. They got speed on this team. They got youngsters on this team. I want guys to be a more encouraged to steal next year. Stealing bases, we saw how, I mean, the, the reason why, a big reason why, it's not the only reason, but a, a massive reason why the Shohei Otani season is so special and why the 50 stolen bases matter is, is think about all of the RBI generation he did for other teams, or not for other teams, for, for other players on the team. Think about the amount of runs scored from Shohei because he was able to put himself in scoring position. And this correlates with the home run thing, too. If you're not hitting the home runs, but you can get people stealing bases and get them into scoring position, you don't need to hit the long ball. Might be a philosophy that Kansas City is adapting here as they've uh, as they have. So they stole three bases in their two game sweep of uh, who, who, who do they sweep away? Was that uh, was that Houston that they played? Did they play Houston in that opening round? Um, knocking them out. I can't remember if it was uh, if it was them playing. No, the Tigers beat Houston. Kansas City uh, knocked out. Who did Kansas City? Baltimore. Baltimore uh, is who they knocked out. But but that aggression, you know, set yourself up for that type of success. Put yourself in those uh, those type of scoring positions, and then and then be able to knock them in there. It's key, you know. Only the the the, the good part when you're talking about the Royals here. 14 hits in the uh, in the in the series, the opening series. But when you mix in those three stolen bases, those 14 hits become just a little bit more impactful. Just a little bit more impactful. Didn't need to, you know, it's interesting because you're looking at like RBI and run scores and, and, and all that stuff. And it, it's a way different scenario when you play a third extra ball game for it. But it's pretty interesting to see the gap of, of runs uh, driven in here in this series. The Mets and the Brewers led, of course, they played an extra game. Uh, Mets had 15 run, uh, runs batted in. Milwaukee at 11. San Diego at 9. And then, man, look at this at the bottom here from the Astros in Baltimore. Three runs for Houston and a single run over a two-game stretch for that for that Orioles offense. And, and, and kind of to go circle it back to our main, our main question or our main thing, right? When you can't just be a power-hitting team. You can't just be... Focus solely on the, uh, the 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 batting, you know. And and, and I know they weren't. Or there, there's more to that uh, that Baltimore team, but being a slugging offense was definitely a key part of their of their uh, mindset or not their uh, of their identity. And when you think about this, and and when you look at it too as a team, they uh, Baltimore fourth most RBI in baseball uh, this year, Baltimore. Hit the second most home runs this year, just behind the Yankees, and 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 that's 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 another eye opening moment right there, right where you're where you're sitting there and you're feeling so confident about this offense, and then ice cold, and it's just I mean it, again you, you 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 can't afford to do that. Bad series and bad stretches happen absolutely, but man, is it is it a reminder of how cruel October is? 
how tough it actually is to win there. The Orioles, by all accounts, when you're looking at statistics wise, statistic wise, this should have been the offense that 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 was the, one of them uh, outside of probably the Yankees, the offense that should be most feared in all of all of the postseason. And yet, nothing. So how important truly is the long ball? Very important. I'm never going to die on this hill. Hitting home runs is so important. <laughs> it's so important. It matters so much. And I know it did pay out, pan out for the Brewers there. But I don't think the home runs were the issue. I think it was a Brewers pitching staff that isn't, I mean, pitching in Milwaukee is supposed to be one of their strengths. Being a strong pitching staff is supposed to be something that they are usually, uh, you know, quite accustomed to. When we're looking here at the uh, the regular season here, uh, the Milwaukee Brewers' fifth best ERA in all of baseball. They gave up the uh, fourth or fifth fewest runs in all of baseball. They had they were um, not in the top ten. They up in the upper half when it comes to strikeouts. There. Uh, opponent batting average against they were in uh, 10th at 236 and a team whip of uh at ninth in all of baseball at 1.23 so not as dominant as as we think but certainly still some some uh some solid pitching in there and 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 that the, the mix the combo should have been enough but but i i think a lot of people are sitting here pretty surprised pretty shocked at the fact that Baltimore and Milwaukee are the teams Heading home and uh, and not moving on to the next round. I mean, I I, I it's it's a, it just I I think if you were someone that that was like uh, that's maybe if you're a Rockies fan and you and, and you're a baseball guy and you watch it kind of reinvigorated a little bit your uh, of your love for how cool October baseball is. Obviously, I'm insanely jealous. Obviously, I'm sitting here and I I, I I'm I'm patiently wait well i don't know if i'm patiently waiting patiently waiting for me to be able to experience playoff baseball again even the lows man just just giving yourself a chance to get in that environment there is nothing like that environment in all of in in, in sports man i i really do think that the playoff atmosphere in every sport is special in its own way but baseball's is it's just every pitch matters every moment matters everything matters you ha you, you really in, in a game that spends so much of its time as a as background noise for people or a passive watch or something like that when you have to sit in and actually lock in for like every pitch and agonize over every single pitch whether you're winning or losing and in the case of the Mets and the Brewers being a total deadlock until the final 12 outs of the game between the two teams and it flipped the script flips like that. <laughs> that's what makes baseball special, man. That's what makes baseball really cool. That's why that's why people crave October because it, there ain't anything like it. So I'm curious. I I I want to maybe I've talked about this before. How important do you, the fan, how important do you fans think home runs are? Do you think teams need to do you think it's still too much leaning into the true outcomes? Do you think teams need to, uh, to, 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 to go in a different direction? Let me know what you think. And, and, and just to give you a little context to that as well, teams that made the playoffs and where they ranked in hitting home runs this year, the New York Yankees at number one, the Baltimore Orioles at number two, the Atlanta Braves at number four, the Phillies, uh, the Mets at number six at 207. The Phillies at 198 at number seven. The Houston Astros at 190, tied with the Padres uh, for the 10 spot at 190. The Cleveland Guardians, 185. The lowest amount of home runs hit from a team during the regular season that also made the playoffs was the Kansas. Actually, no, was the Detroit Tigers at 162, 24th in all of baseball. Kansas City. Uh, 20th in baseball with 170, and then the Brewers at 177 there. Rockies, right in the middle of the pack, right in the middle of the pack at uh, 179 home runs hit for the Colorado Rockies, in case you're looking to compare. And that's, and that's an eye-opening stat right there. 
teams that don't play at Coors Field still can out Homer Homer the Rockies by a considerable amount. And that room that goes back and, and, and taps in to the power questions and concerns that we've had. All right, let's take a quick break and let's talk about expectations for the Rockies next year. Players that we're hoping to see take steps forward and uh, go from there. And we'll be uh, doing some uh, user comments, user comments, listener comments. I don't know, users make me sound like I'm a video game developer or something like that. Uh, all that and more coming up next on today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Before we move on, got to tell you about the folks that help make this show possible. And that includes Tonal. Tonal is going to change your workout game. For those of us who thrive on getting stuff done, including workouts, every minute counts. That's why you need Tonal, the smart strength system that takes the guesswork out of working out so you can make sure you're making the most out of every rep. When life gets busy, fitting in a workout can be stressful. With Tonal, you can get efficient workouts personalized for you and are available with the amount of time you have. Tonal is the world's smartest and most effective strength training system that helps get you stronger. Powered by AI, Tonal learns with every rep so it can deliver workouts personalized just for you. It's like having a personal trainer at home with you as Tonal will optimize every workout just for you. Right now, Tonal is offering our listeners $200 off your Tonal purchase with promo code Locked on MLB. That's tonal.com and use promo code locked on MLB for $200 off your purchase. That's tonal.com. Promo code locked on MLB for $200 off. This is the Locked On Rockies podcast for free and streaming on your favorite streaming services, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. And if your team is the Colorado Rockies, you're in the right spot because that's what we do around here each and every day. Free and streaming on your favorite streaming services, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk. For your second listen of the day, go check out Locked On MLB to stay up to date with all things postseason baseball with our pal Sully. Sirius XM's got you covered with your play-by-play -play all postseason long. Don't miss out on that. So we're talking a little bit about lessons learned and kind of some stuff that uh, the, the Rockies, and, and we talk about stolen bases, but I think overall, I, I think the biggest thing to take away from the uh, a lesson, I don't know, or something, I don't know if the Rockies can, can, can grab on and learn from this, but it's being clutch. It's, it's, timely hitting it's it's stepping up in the right moment it's not getting blown away on strikeouts it's competitive at bats it's situations in which you you these teams that are there have the confidence in themselves to get the job done but have also prepared themselves to succeed in that situation and, and i know that it, it goes back to again the things that i say constantly where i want the rockies to look more prepared i want the rockies to look like they've gotten uh, you know, insight, data, reps, film, something where they don't look so completely outmatched in certain situations and in against certain teams and against certain pitchers. We cannot have the the, the, the Rockies here. And I'm going to look up a stat real quick. As uh, you remember earlier in the week when we uh, when we highlighted all of the uh, uh, all of the stuff that uh, that the Rockies that went wrong with the Rockies. Well, friend of the show, Skylar Timmons actually put together a full list of the bad history. The Rockies made this year. The Rockies made plenty of dubious history in 2024 on purple row. And, and, and I don't want to, to focus on things outside of, of two areas here um, for the Rockies. A factor that didn't help the Rockies was struggles in the ninth inning. Things got better in the final month of the season, but on August 27th, the Rockies held a 7.44 ERA in the ninth inning, which was the highest among MLB teams over the last 50 years. They finished the year with a 7.10 ERA, which still led the league by quite a bit. The next closest was Toronto with a 5.88 ERA in, in there. And then uh, Skyler highlights the fact that this uh, the Rockies became the first team in the modern era to lose five or more games after allowing five plus runs and surrendering the lead in the ninth inning or later after entering the ninth with the lead. They led the league in losses after leading in the eighth inning and also had the most losses in the last at bat of a game this season. If not the failures, if not for the failures of the back end of the bullpen, the Rockies likely could have avoided 100 losses. 
Strikeouts were a huge problem for the Rockies in 2024. They tied with the Seattle Mariners for the highest strikeout rate in baseball, 26.8%. 26.8%. The Rockies were striking out a quarter of the time this season. That that's unacceptable for for if, when you're when you're thinking about teams and 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 getting to the postseason. For the Rockies, both marks represent franchise records since 1993. Ezekiel Tovar, as good as his season was overall, set a franchise record for most strikeouts in a season by a hitter with an even 200, surpassing Ryan McMahon's 198 in 2023. Look at you. You can't have two of your most important players lead your team and not only lead your team in strikeouts, but then set franchise records for striking out in that same season. That that's that's getting in, that's a huge problem. Huge problem. Nothing encapsulates the Rockies' struggles than the fact that they set a modern era record for most games with ten or more strikeouts offensively, doing so in eighty-eight games to surpass the 2019 San Diego Padres. Additionally, the Rockies struck out 15 or more times in five games in September, the most in any month in franchise history. The Rockies struggled mightily against starting pitching, striking out 10 or more times against the starting pitcher 17 times this season, a franchise record. In a doubleheader against the Padres, the Rockies struck out 30 times in two games. The most by a team in a doubleheader since 2015. They swung and missed on 64 pitches. The most whiffs by a team in a single day since pitches were first tracked in 1988. That's how bad it is. It, 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 it's it's not it's not just the le focusing on the level of talent. It's not just focusing on the pitching. That's why yesterday. That's why yesterday I say the biggest problem with the Rockies is the offense. The, the, the pitching can be mediocre to league average, and that's fine. It can The Rockies pitching can be an average pitching staff, but you cannot be a terrible offense. And, and, to, and, and I'm not mincing words here anymore. The Rockies on offense were terrible last year. Yes, they, they improved their home run numbers, but there is not a single thing you can take away from that piece from Skylar Timmons right there because I didn't even get to all the rest of the history. That was just the strikeout focus right there. That was just the strikeout focus and the bullpen blowing it. Yes, those those late inning leads and 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 those games fall on the shoulders of the bullpen. Absolutely, I'm not absolving the bullpen woes this season. But when you keep setting franchise worse, and we're supposed to buy fully in again, this is Ryan McMahon. Like in the, in these situations, he's got to be better. Ezekiel Tovar, he needs to go and work with Brenton Doyle this off season. You cannot be striking out at that rate. Two seasons, fine. Third season, Ezekiel Tovar's strikeout numbers have to be going down. We need to see decreases in strikeout rates. We uh, What was that, Harding or, Sa or Saunders we were reading from earlier this week? You don't cut out the strikeout numbers or the uh, levels, you ain't doing much. And let's go back again here. Let's go back to the playoffs. Let's go to, let's go to our lessons learned here. Let's get back to the postseason and let's see how the teams who are striking out are uh, – are, are, are faring when it comes to still being eliminated. Shockingly, <laughs> two teams that have struck out the most, the Mets and the Tigers, are still in it. But Atlanta, 23 strikeouts out. Baltimore, 22 strikeouts out. Milwaukee, 21 strikeouts out. Those three teams, boom. And those are and those are some seeds that 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 people had big eyes on. Houston Astros out at 15 strikeouts. Kansas City and San Diego. San Diego has only struck out 11 times. They struck out 11 times over their two games. That's it. 11 times the Padres struck out against a dominant Atlanta team. Minus Sale. I know Sale didn't pitch. But still. That stuff matters, man. That stuff matters big time. That That's where the Rockies are. I mean... It, it, it's it's astounding when you think of how many opportunities the Rockies missed this year because of how bad they were in certain situations. I mean, this team needs to start setting franchise records for success, not failure.
And lately, it has been nothing but six, uh, a failure or setting milestones of failure for their Colorado Rockies, not success. All right, let's take a quick break here, and uh, let's read some user comments here. And uh, I want to talk about my uh, some people who I want to set some higher expectations for because my expectations are higher for everybody, but I think there's some players in particular that I want to I want to I, I have high I have high expectations for. Let's do that coming up in segment number three. Before we do that, though, got to tell you about the folks that help make this show possible, and that includes Booking.com, Booking. Yeah, Explore all those U.S. cities you've wanted to and uh, go on a postseason trip. Go check out and see some postseason baseball. Get out of Colorado for a bit. Maybe go see a different part of the country. Maybe go enjoy some of that Southern California sun as uh, the uh, NL West matchup division rivalry there. Maybe you want to go see something different. Enjoy fall on the East Coast and go check out Mets, Phillies. Well, Booking.com is going to get you there with bed and breakfast, vacation rentals, resorts, and so much more. You might just find your perfect stay. They deliver exactly the right U.S. stay for you, and they can find a stay that's close to your home team or rival team stadium, no matter where you're at in the United States. The right stay can make you a fan of any U.S. city, even your baseball rivals. So check out Booking.com. That's Booking.com. Booking. Yeah. Locked on Rockies podcast here, wrapping things up for today in segment number three of today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Uh, let's see here. A couple of user comments and questions here. KI says, I would predict they don't compete in the next three to five years. They are way behind the other organizations in the division as far as infrastructure and talent is concerned. And uh, I don't think you are far off there, uh, KI, as uh, the, it is clear and has shown how far the Rockies are behind, not only in the division, but within baseball there as well. Uh, Jim Cusera says uh, offense is the biggest concern for the Rockies, or the biggest, the top priority for the Rockies. Need more hits and more scores. Feeling mixed right now. I really want to see this team excel and win 30 more games a season, but how can anyone respect the Montfort brothers when they seem clueless and not very concerned? Winning starts with a positive attitude, starting with the owners and working down through the organization, not from the bottom up. I guess I can only hope that things will start getting better. Maybe some prayers will help the organization. Hey, we're looking for uh, anything to help. And uh, the uh, Locked on Rockies YouTube comment section, not mincing words when it comes to their frustration with the ownership here. Uh, and Jack here, Jack uh, says, I personally think either the Rockies surprise us and wipe clean the slate and make insane changes, or they do nothing per usual. No in between these two. And, and you know what? I think you nailed it. I think you totally nailed it, Jack. I, I think it is setting up exactly that way because it, it, because of right now, we're really facing the two things that really locked into, Hey, this team is, is ripe for change. This team is ripe for, for uh, innovation. Something new is, is, is hungry for a new philosophy. But on the other hand, you have, Rockies legacy, Rockies history, Rock uh, everything that we know about the Colorado Rockies says that this team is going to stand pat and say that they have the talent, they need to do better, and they need to do this, blah, blah and spin it, whatever, because they can just, you know, they can spin the 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 globe of takes and say, ah, pitcher health was bad last year. We didn't have all of our starters, so we're gonna go and stick with the starters and spin, 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 ah. Down year for Nolan Jones. We're going to bounce back. The offense, he he's going to be the big bat the offense needs. We're, we're, we're totally confident in our abilities to, to get Nolan Jones back to where he was rookie year. You don't need to worry about that. That's going to help. Uh, don't we'll find a veteran in the middle of spring training that'll that'll fill that Jake Cave role and we'll have a couple of big moments. And Bud Black will play him for 120 games instead of starting somebody else because that's that's what we do. That's where the rock goes. That's that's how we handle it. And I think it's more likely they don't do anything. I, I mean, I don't know. Right now, until something until something changes in my in my brain, I I I, I don't think the Rockies make big changes. Their their history does not suggest that they do it. The, the 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 organization themselves does not suggest that that that's what they want to do. Just letting you know. I saw. I didn't read into the headline, but I'm just letting you know. Attendance is down again, two years in a row. It's not a lot. It's only slightly. But your attendance has dipped for two years in a row. Your stadium is packed with away fans for 85% of the home games this season. 
you can't sit there and say the Rockies fans were the ones that filled most of those seats during most of those series. And and this is no dig at you, Rockies fans. Uh, this is it, this is this is just the reality. And Monfort again, it, 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 he's chilling. His beautiful ballpark and a play and a destination for the summer for people to travel to. Now with every team in baseball coming through, he's chilling. He's not that worried about attendance. Because when you're still getting the sellouts and still getting that for to celebrate Charlie Blackman at the end of the year, when you're still getting some of the crowds that the Rockies saw at the end of the year, even on the weekends, attendance isn't as big of your concern. But uh, I, I think that's a great comment there. Folks, we are out of time. And so I don't want to do a short little thing on these expectations. So we'll 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 revisit the expectations next week. We got a little we got we dove more into our playoff talk and Got a little out there. And, of course, we love reading the comments. So, again, keep firing off your Rockies comments. Keep letting me know what's on your mind this offseason. I really want to emphasize this offseason as you and uh, as we as us chatting as Rockies fans here as we navigate that. But, uh, Jack, I think you uh, I think you're on to something there, my friend. That's a that's a good observation there. But, uh, folks, that is going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day. Find us on your favorite streaming services. Find us on the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel. And if you need more Colorado sports coverage, Locked on Broncos, Locked on Avalanche, Locked on Nuggets, and Locked on Buffs got you covered. If you need an, another option for your second listen, Locked on MLB with our pal Sully's got you covered there. Folks, until next time, this is Paul Holden saying so long from the Locked on Rockies podcast.